Debbie, it's always great to talk to you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for talking to me. This, as I've told people, the best setting, the best cars, the best people. La Jolla Concord Elegance 2017. We're here with Keith Martin. And how many years have you been the uh, master of ceremonies here? Barnaby, it's my sixth year, and it gets better every year. What a venue. I mean, well, it's, it's the venue, but it takes more than that. The, the chair here, Michael Dorvier, Harry Clark, their whole team, they work every year to make it better. You know, they, the car selection is better, the organization is better, and I've just watched it grow from kind of a nice car show into a world-class event over just six years. Wow, which is really amazing. It's a testament how hard a work it is. Such a lifestyle event here. I, I, you know, it's hard not to find something you like. This is the most friendly, partner-friendly event that I go to. Uh, the the person I'm with here today, they get to go shopping when they've had their car hit. The restaurants are great. The tour was good. So I, what you do is it's unusual. Most Concours are kind of far away from anything else, but this is really right in the village. So it's the one event that I can recommend to anybody. Say, bring your wife, bring your girlfriend if they're not a car person, and they will have, they won't hate you after the weekend's over. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well. You have many favorites. Any in particular? Uh, well, there's always something for everybody. I mean, look at this, this Ford Bronco Desert Racer, all the way to a little TVR that's right down here, right across from us, some Ferraris over there. There's a Ford GT that uh, Camilo Pardo, who's the designer of the Ford GT, that's his personal car. Packard is the featured, featured mark this year. Now, Packard isn't a name that when I say it, gets the hair to stand up on the back of my neck and gets me excited, but the Packards are fantastic. You walk down there and you can see why they chose them. And this is a lost part of American history. Packard's been gone for a long time. And here they are, they brought Packard back to life for this day. Well, and it's so great because it's the mark, you can see the whole progression yeah. from early on. You can see all the innovation that really happened. Packard was... It's like seeing Elvis from birth until death, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well put. Here's another interesting car that you really don't get to see very often, and it's a 1951 Maserati A6 G2000. And this is a Farina, or Pin and Farina bodied at the uh, time. I think it was Farina then. And this, interesting, it was the Riverside International Auto Museum uh, had this car foundation, and uh, I think. Bill Losey restored it, and it's a striking color. I mean, you can't help but notice it. And it's a, uh, it's just another car that you don't often get to see, Concours or not. So it's very nice. We're happy to see it here. We're here today with Mark John. Mark, you know, there are a lot of cars here. Yeah. You go down the line, but this car is just stunning, styling. Yeah, what's the exact story on this? I, I appreciate you asking. There's actually a great story. Um, you know, the Scarabs came out in 1958. There was only three of them, and Lance Raventolo put them to the, the market to uh, race against the Ferraris, the Maseratis, etc. It's American, rich heritage story out there. And uh, I had an opportunity to be involved in a project to bring a car to life. This is a recreation of the 1958 Scarab as raced by Augie Paps and later owned by Augie. Uh, Augie was gracious enough to let us use his car to get all the details, the specs, the dimensions, etc. And uh, along with building the project, we had Harry Hoyer, who was the owner and a driver of the Meister Brow Racing Team. Um, well, that was an interesting story because Lance raced them first and then he sold them off, didn't he? Yes, you know your story very well. So Lance decided he wanted to go race Formula One. So he kept one of the cars, turned it into a daily driver, and the other two he sold off. And uh, Harry Hoyer of the Meister Browser Racing Team is the, the, the individual that purchased the two cars. So um, there's that rich racing history. And then this car, like I said, was put together using a, a number of uh, participants that were part of the original team. Don Devine, Nick Decker, Augie Paps, Harry Hoyer. And, and the really cool thing about it is when this car was completed, I also had Bruce Kessler, who, as you know, oh, got yeah. Lance into racing yeah. and was the originator here, and uh, Chuck Pelly, who designed this body back in 1958 when he was only 18 years 18 old. 18 years old. Isn't that exactly. crazy? On a napkin. On a napkin. <laughs> yeah. And those two and gentlemen. And look at the lines. Yeah, oh. and those two gentlemen came and they uh, looked at the car.
and they said this is exactly like the original and uh, they were gracious enough to also sign the underside of the car and so we got their signatures saying we authenticate that this is exactly like the ones that we had uh, and that's the story that we have and I've heard this. This has got an awesome sound. I mean, it does. <laughs> that it does. And it's surprising, you know, from a little 283 small block Chevy, which was bored out to 339. Um, it's got the Hillborn mechanical fuel injection system in there and Corvette heads. This thing's pushing out almost 450 horsepower. And that's what they had in the day. Wow. We're here in front of a 1953 Nash Healey convertible. I mean, these are really an interesting car. You don't think of... Uh, uh, Nash Motors and Kelvinator, uh, when you look at this car, that's for sure. Uh, Pin and Farina designed the body, uh, and it was a collaboration with Donald Healy in, uh, in England. And they used, it's, this is one of the first hybrids, and that 1951 being the first, but they, uh, uh, it was just a very interesting departure in style, and it was something that Nash six-cylinder engine, uh, bulletproof, and uh, uh, Pininfarina styling and Healy chassis and suspension. But because it did all that, uh, it combined all that, and all the transportation involved from one place to the other to finish to the other, they were very expensive, and I'm sure they lost a lot of money on each one that was sold. But it was something that people actually took to Le Mans and raced. We're so happy that uh, things like this can happen in a public park. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. You know, you got three, five people from all over from San Diego, people from all over really just coming out to enjoy some of the, some of the great cars. And, you know, from, you know, from some of the earliest cars we've ever made to some of the ones just came off the line last year. So to see um, you know, people who love cars uh, of all different types of styles, from the muscle cars to the, you know, I mean, great, great seeing here from the old uh, Model Ts. It's just, it's phenomenal, actually. Great. Enjoy the Good day. Good to see you. Thank we you, are for sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Here we are in the front of the 1961 300D Mercedes Wardour. I mean, this was really top of the line for Mercedes right after the war. These were exceptionally well built and they were called Adenauers after the Chancellor of Germany. And uh, these were their state cars. They're really amazing. This big, massive a car with no pillar, pillarless, completely open. It's amazing. Not only that, this is very rare with a sunroof. I mean, very rare. And it has things like headrests, massive headrests, <laughs> but headrests in the time. And just the, the veneer of the wood, looks like tiger wood, is, uh, this was really, really something. This was for uh, certainly Germany and Europe, and well, anywhere. This was really a car. Now, it's not being a cabriolet or a roadster open, you don't see that many people that, that have restored them, certainly to this quality. This car is better than new. And, uh, you know, it has the fitted luggage in the trunk. I mean, my gosh, yeah, this was really a piece. And people don't get to see them that often or certainly see them with this kind of restoration. It's a, it's a really beautiful car. I like it, and I thought I'd share it with you.